take your pen, your uh, uh, pencils, books, and write. I'm not sure you can write on your phone, can you? Yes. Amen. 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 Bow down your heads for a short prayer. Most High God, this morning we thank you, we honor you for your grace and mercies. Now today you have granted us the privilege to listen to your word. We are about to learn from you. Therefore, me standing here, I am nothing more than a vessel. Father, push me aside. Let your spirit from on high penetrate through my tongue. Speak to your people around here. And let us all be equipped and be edified by your word. We thank you for the strength. We thank you for everything. Cause every heart not here to be receptive to this word. Let us, let us abide by it. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Today's teaching is just the title, The Holy Spirit. See after me. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading will be taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 9. I'm going to read the first scripture. We'll be reading a lot today because it's a teaching. And I'll open you room for questions because we have more time. Just about 35 so that we finish. Romans 8 verses 9 says, But you are not in the flesh. Say, I am not in the flesh. I am not in the flesh. But in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of this. I repeat, Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. The scripture says, you are not in the flesh. Just now you repeated after me, I am not in the flesh. And there was a comma there, he said, indeed. Not in the flesh, eh? eh? Indeed. If only, on which condition? If. Only what? The Spirit of God dwells in you. At that time, you don't become flesh, but you become what? A spirit. Are you a spirit? Yeah. Mm, here we go. We are reading Romans 8 verse 9. He says, now, or but, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of the Lord dwells in you. So the question is, are you a flesh or are you a spirit? You are? You are a spirit. Okay, you? You? Oh, you just read it. He said, but you? He's talking to you, not me. He said you. So are you a spirit or you are flesh? Gone. You beat up me. You didn't understand what he's saying. Eh? None of above. Okay. <laughs> you are none of the above. He said, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, continue your sentence in your Bible. What does he say? If one does not have the spirit of Christ, then he is not of his. You're not of Christ. So if Christ comes at the last day, he's coming to take some people with him back to heaven. If you don't get it. Yeah, I'm listening. If you don't get it, say it. Let's you say it because we are learning. Eh? Today I'm teaching, I'm not preaching. So you can just pop in. If Christ comes, he's coming to take some people away to heaven. The question is, which people is he coming to take them? His. And Romans 8, 9 says, if you don't have Christ's spirit, then he is not. Yes. So if you can, will he take you? Yes. 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 It's gone. If you don't have Christ's spirit, ah. when he comes, will he take you? No. no. That's simple as that. So if you don't have Christ's spirit, then you are not for Christ. Yes. So if you are not for Christ, then you are for who? Yes. That's it. We learned this morning that there's only two ways at a junction. So if you have Christ, so Romans 8, 9 says, But now, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed you have God's spirit. 
So what at all is prosperity? You might think you have, but maybe you don't have. So today is a teaching's outline. The Holy Spirit that you have been talking about, who is he? What does he do? What are his functions? What role does he play in the church? Why do I even bother to know him? If I don't have, is that really necessary? What does it mean to be filled with the spirit that we are talking about? You also learn about the fruit of the spirit. If I have him, how will people know that I have him? That's the fruit. And the last question is, the last question. Will you go to heaven? The last question. Will you go to heaven? And that is what the Romans 8 is answering. We are, we are going to take them one by one. What is the meaning of the Holy Spirit? Two words. Holy and Spirit. The word Spirit in Hebrew is Ruach. Ruach. This one is a kind of energy. It's a power. For example, if I drop, I leave the microphone now. What is happening to it? It is falling. What is causing it to fall? Gravity. That force is pulling the microphone down. So it's an energy, it's a power. That spirit, Holy Spirit, the spirit we are talking about, this one, the power, you can't describe it. This one is gravitational force. When you put something on top of water, what does it do? It sinks. Something put it down. It's another type of energy, right? But this kind of energy or the power we are describing here, words are not enough to describe it. So I will try to illustrate something this way while I start. Okay. Now, read with me. It appears in our Bible <laughs> a lot of times. Uh, uh, in the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament, it's 378 times. In Aramaic, 11 times. New Testament, it appears 379 times wow. in the Bible. So if it's not necessary, God will not allow them to be writing and writing and writing about it. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Is the word used from the ancient times to describe and explain the experience of a divine power in working upon someone, in someone, and around someone, and understood by them as the power of God. We can say that the power of God is in me. As I have said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The difference between upon me and in me. If there's a glass of water here. Uh -huh. Now, I have this water here. Fresh. If I drink the water, it's in you. Where is it? It's in you. It's in me. Can you see the water in me? No. no. Let me shower some more. If I put the water on me, upon you, upon it's upon you. me. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Within some few minutes or hours, the water will dry up. So you can't see it anymore. But if it's in me, it is doing something in me. Only me see it. Unless I do something, you can never see that ah, this guy has drunk water. Right? Good. So that's how the power is like. It can be in you. It can also be on you. It can also be around you. God can put his spirit around you that whenever spirits are coming, you see, they pass by. Sometimes the riches, the riches here, raise up your let me see you. <laughs> when you see me walking by, you see me, they begin to dodge. There's a spirit around me that you, you don't try. Yeah, the power is there. Amen. Amen. But today, you ask yourself where you want it to be. In you, on you, or around you. Amen. Amen. We are just, we are just introducing the subject. We have not started yet. Holy Spirit, what is it? Or who at all is he? The Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. And as a Christian, you need to know that the Holy Spirit has been part of the Trinity of God since the beginning of time. <coughs> when you mention the word beginning, the great Bible name comes into your mind? Genesis. Genesis, Genesis means beginning. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The earth was dark and void. 
And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, How many persons are here? How many persons? Three. Three. Yeah. You don't get it? I get it. You know, the Spirit of God. God the Son. And God the Spirit. And the Spirit. That's why we call Trinity. Next time I'll go in the Trinity. So you don't go in there. So the Holy Spirit is, I would say, the third member of the Godhead. Good. The Trinity. God is one. How many God do we have? One. How many? One. one. Some time ago, I illustrated for you with water. Remember? Yeah. I said, this is water. It takes the shape of this container. So we said the water is, whatever shape you call this. Let me put this water into a pan. I begin to boil it. I boil it. I boil it. A time will come, the pan will be empty. What is coming out of the water? What do you call it? Vapor. Damp. Is it a type of water? Yes. Can you hold it? No. But it's water. This same water, if you ask me to put the water in my hand and take it to the train station, how far will I walk? Not even up to the door, it will seep out of my hands. But this same water, I'll put it in the freezer. The next morning, I'll take it. What do I have? Ice block. I can put the ice block in my hand and walk from here to Antwerp and come back. Why? The water has changed its state. Yeah, state. But has the water changed? No. no. That the simplest way to explain Trinity to you is God in one, but manifesting himself in different areas and dimensions. So the vapor form, that's a spirit form, that's what you're talking about now. Because the vapor, you can't see it, you can't touch it, but it is there. That's what is inside of you. You are powerful. Hey, when you open your mouth, fire will begin to roll. The way you begin to run away. The girls here. I didn't say you are rich. I said the girls here, when you begin to pray. Uh -huh. When the spirit is inside of you, and one guy went to the station, he said, Wow, I'm my cat. Yeah, it's good, man. He said, Yes, Emetiao. The way to begin to speak Emetiao, the guy said, Oh, I'm fine. You begin to run away. But you can see that you are. Fire. Amen. So, the Father is distinct divine person. The Son, Christ Jesus, is another distinct person. And the Holy Spirit is another distinct person. Christ Jesus was truly God. And yet, a person descended from the Father. When Christ was here, he was in Capernaum. There alone. Jerusalem. There alone. He couldn't be Jerusalem and Capernaum at the same time. You understand? Like you now, you are here in the church building. Are you home at the same time? Except the witches. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is also another divine, distinct person. But he can be at every place at the same time. You get me now? Okay. Everyone says, are you here? Okay. So, let's talk about the personality of the Holy Spirit. When you read John chapter 16, verse 13 to 14, I have it on the screen, so read along with me. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. I missed one of the heads in blue. How many heads do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's supposed to be eight. So the Holy Spirit is not eight. It's not a fire. It's not a dove. It's a he, a person. My name is me, my name. So if you want to talk to somebody about me, oh, Today, Elder uh, Andrews taught us about the Holy Spirit. He said, right, that he qualifies me. So that one tells you that the Holy Spirit is not an it. Because I mean, when you tell them you have the Holy Spirit, they begin to feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. nay, Holy Spirit doesn't make you feel electrified. No, he is a person. 
In these quoted verses of the Gospel of John, where we just read, however, he used and personalized the pronoun he. Supposed to be eight times, I wrote six times. Additional to describe what he would do. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is neither an impersonal force nor a mere influence. Rather, he possesses a full, distinct personality. When you have a he people begin to know. No, no, no. He's a person. Mm -hmm. So he has feelings. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, don't grieve the spirit that lives in you. You got it down? Okay. Now, let's study some functions of the Holy Spirit. The first thing that he does is, as a person who searches the deep things of God, as Romans 8 20 says, likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself, so you see the way Himself, that means the Spirit is a man. Okay. Intercede for us with glories too deep for words. So when you are praying, you don't even know what to pray for. Who helps you? Who helps you? So if you don't have him, how would you pray? That's why when you pray, you begin to repeat things over and over. Lord, my shoe. Lord, my shoe. I need a shoe. I need a shoe. I need a shoe. More than one of us, shoe, 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 shoe. shoe. Yeah. You'll be praying. You see, there's somebody who pray before the bedtime. <laughs> you see, even how to pray, you don't know. But the Spirit Himself, He helps you when you are weak. What again does He do? He testifies. John 15 26. But when He, the Helper, comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. So when the Holy Spirit comes to you, He's come to reveal Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Let me pause for questions. These are some of the things the Holy Spirit has come to do for you. When you are weak, He's here to strengthen you. When you are, you cannot even pray. He's here to help you even in your prayer. Again, before we go to the attributes, the functions, mm -hmm. the work He does, and who He is. Any question? Yes. I don't have a question about, we're talking about the uh, water and the vapor, can you like go very deep to it, like which one is um, the Father, which one is the Spirit? Okay, so, let me go back, thank you for your question. Water as it is, I can't do anything with this unless I use it for something else. It is too big, it can change form and color. If I put this water into a rectangular bowl, the shape becomes rectangle. If I put it in a cylindrical object, the water becomes cylindrical. If I put black, blue ink in it, the water becomes blue. If I put red in it, that means the water it is, it can change, it can for form, it can just, that's how God is. He's too mighty to, to manipulate him. So God the Father is water on his own. Now, when Jesus Christ came, he was limited to one spot at a time. He had a shape like a man. He walked, he talked, broad chested like me, very handsome like me. <laughs> Whether I like it or not, I'm handsome. <laughs> so I put the same water, which has no form, but it takes the form of which I put in, into this and put in the freezer for some time. Jesus Christ was put in the freezer for some time. Okay. Whose freezer was it? Mary. Mary, in the womb. You see where I'm coming from? And tomorrow morning, when I take the water, it has a shape. But the shape of the eye is limited. As time goes and begins to do what? To melt. That's how Jesus was. That's the sun in this level of our explanation and our example. That same ice block, I put it in a pan on the, uh, on the, uh, on the fire. Fire up. The water is going to the block is going to smelt, going to boil up. What's coming up is the Holy Spirit. So when you open the kitchen door, you see that the damp is everywhere. That's the Holy Spirit. You can't see it, but you can feel it. That's how the Spirit. When Jesus Christ was here, you could feel, feel him. One woman went and even touched 
the hem of his garment. You understand? When he resurrected, uh, Thomas said, let me feel their hands, the way they put the nails. You could feel him. You can feel the eye like his scalp, but you can't feel the damp. Talk. The damp, you can't touch. So the damp in this mind, mean example is the Holy Spirit. But it has power. Let's go back to history. When they were developing trains, they called something locomotive engine or steam engine. They used the damp to power the trains and the train will be moving. So Holy Spirit is a power to energize you even to come to church, even to pray. It is the power of God. From this same water. Darling, thank you. Your question, Eric. It's answered, thank you. I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I say, uh, I will open my mouth to pray, but I will pray in my mind. Yeah. Okay. Right. You can be praying in your mind. Yeah. You can pray with words. But the powerful one is praying in the spirit. We will reach there very, very soon. The, uh, there's nothing wrong with any one of these. But once you are praying with your mind, it's very easy for you to be uh, mis 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 misled. Mis mis huh. I'm praying in my mind, though. All of a sudden, I want to flash me. <laughs> my answer is straight to Amman now. But when you are praying, when words are coming out of your mouth and you have closed your eyes, the distraction is very, very minimal. Unless somebody touches you, that is there. We we come to where we pray in the spirit. Last question to this point. Last question. No more question. Okay. Let's move on. The attributes of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the following. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent, which means He is present at all times, no matter where you are. He is there. As long as you call yourself a Christian, you have been baptized by. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in you. Wherever you are, he is there. So, David says something in Psalm 139, verse 7. He said, God, where should I go to hide from you? But when I go down there to the sea, you are there. When I go to the grave, you are there. When I hide to my bedroom, you are there. Even when I lie, that that's where your hand will even touch me. So don't think you are doing something to hide away from us. He will catch you. When the guy gave you a text at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, while you are reading, this means let me receive what you are reading. He is there with you. So be careful what you are reading. Uh -huh. <laughs> a physical being is limited to a place at a time. He is different. Uh, he is present everywhere. When Jesus Christ came, I just said he was limited to Jerusalem and Capernaum at that time. But when the Spirit came, he is everywhere. Now, what again? The Spirit is omniscient. It's a characteristic of God, which means that He knows all things, actual things, even what will happen the next clock tick, tomorrow, next week, next month. Yesterday, He knew He knew everything what happened. Ten years, but He knows everything. What you're about to do Monday, when you pick up your call to tell that guy your mind, He knows what you're going to say. <laughs> mm. Let me tell you a piece of my mind. That guy, you want to be, my friend, you want to give you words to say, hmm. you know, brother, can you join me to church next week, Sunday? Meanwhile, you wanted to blast him. My Holy Spirit knew already what you're about to say. Amen. Amen. He's omniscient. He knows all things. Again, um, Holy Spirit is also omnipotent or all powerful. The word potent comes from potential. Last time I talked about potentials. He has a power and a potential to do everything. He is very powerful. When you die, he can even bring you back. That's what the Bible says. If the spirit of he who rose Christ from the dead is in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. Amen. Example is in Luke 135. The Holy Spirit came upon who? Mary. And she was pregnant. Who has this thing happened before uh, to after this incident? Nobody. Maybe to myself in the future. Uh, he is all powerful. He can do everything. So you can see from these qualities and attributes that the Holy Spirit is who? Powerful. No. Person. 
is a person, and that person is who? Jesus. No. God. Okay, we will come to a point where all of them are going to be one. Okay. Connie, is, is it okay? Ekoye. Ekoye, I know it's a person. The way I'm looking at it, it's like Ekoye. <laughs> now, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, what is he coming to do for you? We know he is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. That omni means all. Okay. And Elder says, you should have him. But when he comes to my life, what is he coming to do for me? One, to teach you. By the help of the Holy Spirit from the Father, who sent in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance, to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Every day I tell you to read your Bible. Why am I saying that? When you read them, you will forget, of course. But when the Spirit of Truth comes, you will bring you into remembrance. You have learned. What you have learned. But if you don't learn and he comes, what is he going to remember you about? Ceremonies. Because you don't have anything. Hmm? You want him to come and bend away in your head again. <laughs> no, you have to learn it. <laughs> Two, he is here also to guide us. You can read this one from Acts 16 6. And they went through the region of Perth, uh, uh, Phrygia, Galatia. Having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak to the uh, speak away in Asia, when Paul was in his journey, the Holy Spirit told him, Don't go to this place. Go to that place. No, no, no. Wait here. Tell him for a night. Wait. He will always guide you. When you are going to, or you're going on vacation, or you're traveling, you hear something speaking to you. You think it's something, something. No, it's the Spirit. It's communicating with him. Don't wear this one. The weather is not nice. Wear this. Mm, no. Today I was choosing what you wear, baby McCarthy. Mm, that's why I was going to face my shoe, mm, my bag. Mm. His own spirit, her own spirit, and God's spirit. Mm. This one is too short. The guy should be looking at you. No, wear this long one, it's fitter. And she will wear the long skirt. Let's go for baby McCarthy. <laughs> See, the spirit, he guides, he guides us all the time. From the beginning of time, see Genesis chapter 1, until the end of time, the Holy Spirit is still at work. Mm -hmm. In fact, he is the commander between heaven and earth. So in Genesis chapter 1, he brought order into the universe when he moved upon the surface of the waters and bringing shape to things. So the moment things become rough in your life, who should you call? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Two, Job 26, 13 says, the Holy Spirit is the chief architect who nourishes the heavens. If they are going to build a building or a, or a bridge or whatever, the contractors, they draw a plan. The architect is designed. That's, that's what you want to do, right? Architect, yeah. The Holy Spirit is the one who draws even your figure, your shape. Say, mm, if I make the stomach too big, mm, and I, the canary will not like it. Let me make it flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you. So, whilst Eric is praying for a wife, Holy Spirit says, okay, Eric, hold on. I'm going to design one. I'm going to design and draw. And God will say, let me see the drawing. And God will manufacture the girl for her, for him. He says, hey, let me ask some word to it. Before the girl comes to Eric, it's perfect. Begin. Hey. Uh, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Amen. In Psalm 104, the Holy Spirit is a process agent who renews the face of the earth. In Job 33, the Holy Spirit is the creation of all who gives life to human beings. So the life you have in you, who give it to you? It's the Holy Spirit. So a time will come, he will take it back. Say, I want my life back. And this body will be useless. It will rot. You take the spirit that you have to God. Say, God, this is the person you told me to guide and teach. God say, hey, welcome. I told you last time to do this. You didn't do huh? Even we are not going there. All of us are good now. Amen. The last part, Revelations. The Holy Spirit is the everlasting life giver who gives to those who test and come the water of life freely. If you really eager, you desire, you who's to come to me tell you love it, you want to have it. My God. He give it to you. That's how the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So how many of us have been baptized by the Holy Spirit? As to this point of the teaching. 
We, we, anyway, we will reach there, but uh -huh. answer uh, this question. Have you been baptized by the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay. One, you too? Two, yes. Three, four. You too? Four. Five. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can do a condom. When we reach there, we shall see if you are really been baptized. We are going to reach there soon. <laughs> so far, questions. Yes. We need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So right now, if you want to do something like, you say we should talk to the Holy Spirit, like who should I speak to? Like Jesus or like the Holy Spirit? We come there. Thank you. <laughs> The Holy Spirit continued with Jesus Christ during his preaching and healing ministries. We must allow the Holy Spirit to be with our ministries as Jesus did. When the Holy Spirit is in operation, people are changed and lives are strengthened. Mm. I will answer your question very soon. The Holy Spirit is God's agent on earth in the work of the church. So right now, if I want to go to Pastor Nyaku, to go and complain about the late coming of Brother Enoch. When I go there, he asks me, did he speak to your presiding? No, go to speak to the presiding. You don't have to bypass him and come to me because he is there, my representative. That's how it is. So the Holy Spirit is here right now. Jesus says something in John 14. Anything that you need, Pray to the Father in my name. Mm. Who is helping you to pray? The Holy Spirit. Yes. So every one of them does his own work. So when I, I have the urge, the desire to go down my knees and pray, who is pushing me on my knees? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. When I lift up my hands, Lord, I thank you. The person who is bringing the thanksgiving out of me is not me. It's who, who is in me. Yes. Lord, I need the power to be on this church. I don't need money, no gold, no BMW, nothing. That is the power of you in the church. This is my prayer to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who calls me not to pray for BMW? It's the Spirit. And I pray to who? God the Father. Through whose name? Jesus' name. So everyone has his own function they play. For in all they are one. You get a question answered? Have you reach there? Okay. The next point is this. He is involved in the expansion of the church. In as for apostles, when Peter stood that day, after he preached for just some few minutes or hours, 3,000 people were Sorry. converted to the church. 3,000. Wow. But our own, what are we doing? We have the spirit, we are sitting on it. Become lazy. Even to do something, we feel shy. If that day that the Holy Spirit came upon them in Acts of the Apostles those days, and Peter felt shy, he couldn't speak. Would 3,000 people be added to the church? No. So when the Spirit comes, it gives you power to preach or to speak. So you say you have the Holy Spirit. Yes. You have the power. You say yes. Come and do open prayer. <laughs> my name is series. Where is the power you have? Hmm? So today we see she demonstrated the power in the Holy Spirit. We told her, do you know uh, this was uh, that I prefer MC. The power he had, she's using it. Let's clap for her. That's it. So when I say we are going to evangelism, I'm not sure she will say, I feel shy, I will not go. She has the power to do it. She will do it. So if you have the power and you don't use the power, the power becomes what? Powerless. Yeah, that's how it is. So the Holy Spirit is the administrator of the church affairs. If churches today will allow the Holy Spirit to work as it did in the earlier churches, our life and work could have entirely, entirely revolutionized, causing a change in people's lives. But nowadays, we don't allow the Holy Spirit to take lead in the church. We do it the way we're supposed to do. Okay. Formula, formula, party, party. No, we put the Spirit aside. No, no. Peter, this turned out, no. We always want the Spirit to take the lead. Amen. So when I say, Baby Makati, next week you are preaching, don't say, Ed, I have not prepared. Say, Yes, I'll do. Why? You are being backed by somebody called the Holy Spirit. Admin, bro. 
And how did you tell me to prepare this? It was not Thursday. It was Thursday. I said, Lord, give me the wisdom and you're going to do it. Okay. He just gave me one quotation. I wrote it down. When I'm teaching uh, my, my work, one will come, I put it down. Last night after the party here, I said, Lord, is it enough? It's enough. So I have to break down the pieces so that I can share. The first thing is just accept it, you do. No matter you accept to do, what if you say yes? Now you trust me that I can back you up. Mm. But if you say no, nah, I cannot. You say, oh, so I am here for nothing. And you don't even trust me, I can help you do it. Then you grieve him. Oh. Are you with me here? So, question. Who wants to preach next week Sunday? Adam, <laughs> <laughs> huh? okay. please put your hand down. You will not preach. Who wants to preach next week Sunday? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric said he wants to preach next week Okay. Apart from Eric, who too wants to preach next week Sunday? Maka. <laughs> So nobody tries the Holy Spirit, eh? No, 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 no. Who told you for now after you can't preach? Is it in the Bible? Is it in the Bible? No, no, I don't know if it's in your Bible. I don't know. You can't preach it. Okay. Who wants to preach next week Sunday? Eric said he will. Who else? So that means you don't have the Holy Spirit. You have. So why? We just now we said that he is the power. He is God's administrator. It's written here. Hey, watch here. The Holy Spirit is what? He is what? Administrator of the church affairs. One of the affairs of the church is to preach. That's right. And is to teach. A time will come, I will not be standing teaching every time. Eh? A time will come, me too, I will go. Somebody must be here. And it starts from you. So if now you believe what is written there according to 1 Corinthians 12, verse uh, 4 to 11, then you say, yes, I will do it. Why? The Holy Spirit is the administrator. He will push me to do it. That's right. Yes. I have not been going to any Bible school for what this I'm doing, you know. Yeah. Pastor Kofi and Dorothy are going to Bible schools and graduating and I have not been there, you know. But the moment I receive the opdracht, I commit back to him. He will then tell me how to do it. This morning's teachings, did I open the Bible? No. It's a question you ask, the, the Spirit will just drop into me and I just flow it. Because when you read, he said, he will bring into remembrance all that I have. So the, the moment you ask me the question, the Spirit will drop the answer and I'll give it to you. I don't, I don't do homework for 10 hours. No. So the more you say, I cannot, I cannot, it means you are, it is you who want to do it. But it is not you, brother. It's not you, sister. It's who? Remember our text, Romans 8 verse 9. You are not flesh, you are spirit. If you do not have God's spirit, then you are none of his. So how can you tell you have the Holy Spirit and you can't stand before people to preach? I doubt. I doubt. Did I write the Bible? Yeah, I doubt. Personally, I doubt. Last question. Last question. And I mean last question. Who wants to stand here next week Sunday and preach? My next season is oh, you just if if you know, Amen. this October, October, this October, Tony stand here and preach. Hey. 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 So we have uh, Sandra, Sister Sandra, and uh, Jerry Harry. They have the Holy Spirit. Will you receive the power? Okay. So you want to tell me I have the talent to teach? Yeah, so I So I cannot sing. Yeah, I'm eating here to Oh, so I cannot sing. When they are singing, do I keep my mouth shut? No. Can you dance? Yes. 
Can I dance? Yeah. Is there any formula in dancing? No. no. Freestyle. <laughs> you can jump and no. it's That's not dancing. <laughs> Whatever you do, you are not doing it for you. You are doing it for somebody else. So when you come here and bring your Bible and you say, today, the word of God I want to share with you is how to respect your parents. Proverbs chapter verse the Bible says, respect your parents in the Lord. You are reading God's word. Are you the one? Are you reading your own word? No. Are you reading your own word? No. Are you preaching now? Yes. yes. So preaching is reading God's word to people. I'm going to preach next week and I know she can do it. Yes. yes. So, the matter, it's not necessarily being where your talent is. That's another thing. But when the Spirit comes in you, you can do everything. So, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Me, you know, I always say, I, I'm not saying this to pride myself or, or to boast. I always say, me, I can do everything. That's why I tell my kids at home. I'm a teacher, I'm a preacher, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm an administrator. No book can I do my work for me. After my, I do my book, how then? Send it to them, control, pack, it's gone. I do everything. I'm a manager, I'm everything. Why? Because I have in me that I can do all things. Hairdressing. Hairdressing, I can do it. Come, I'll dress your hair for you. <laughs> Amen. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, Anything divinely, you can do it. Mm. Remember, that you can do it. It's not only singing. Uh, I told you last time when I came from Ghana last year, our old school gathering. Last time I was watching the clip, that people there were more than three thousand people, and I had a dream about this months earlier. How can I be standing there before these people and talking? How many are we? Not even fifty, but this were three thousand over me standing there. <laughs> but it went well. When I finished, I now said, God, I thank you for making dream a reality. Because I am eager to do it. So my call no so and you will do it. It's very easy. Yeah. <laughs> now, why do I need the Holy Spirit? Maybe you ask yourself, why? All this you are talking about, you may know the reason why you need it in your life. One. He gives you a supernatural power. Mm. <laughs> what I'm doing now is a supernatural power. I have not studied the word from head to toe, but he gave me the wisdom and the power to go by it, and I do it. Two, he says it in Acts 1 18, by you shall receive, by you shall receive, by you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So if you say you have it, then where is your power? If you dancing here, only Brad James will come and dance and it's wow, I like his his charisma. He has the power and the zeal. And uh, Shaki will be standing there as if he's scratching the hands. He doesn't even have the power to clap his hands like a man. And you say you have power. Only if you know how to drop. <laughs> come and dance here, you fool shy. Oh, wow. Somebody with power, you fool shy? You don't have power. You be can't be proud of it. You see. So if you say you have power, demonstrate your power in the things we do in God's house. Do something. When uh, Andy is playing the organ, sometimes I feel his hands are tense, and then his his head is high. I say, I can't tell in the spirit. He has some certain things. He put a key down. Yes, it's not, it's not just talent, eh? it's Holy Spirit. Yes. When this man went crazy in the, uh, in the palace, God put a power on a small boy. The small boy, go to the king's palace, go and play. When the madness comes and the boy begins to play, you know the character I'm talking about? Yes. David and Saul. Yes. Do you think it's by talent? It's by power. How can somebody be crazy and somebody play music, he'll be well? It's not just going to the music school, you can't do that. No. You must receive the power. Yes. So the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural gifts. Mm -hmm. 
I was the MC last week at uh, my parents' wedding. The father called me and said, Hey, Elder, I never told you can. I said, Elder, don't try me. <laughs> the way I match the program, he said, Wow, hey, he said, uh, don't try me. You just put me there. I'll ring the bell. I have the power. I started the wedding. <laughs> you, you, your wedding. The day I will blast your wedding, you will feel it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it is not your willpower, but it is supernatural power from the Holy Spirit. That's why you need him. Number three, the Holy Spirit helps us and build our faith. So when you think you cannot, he will build the faith. Ah, Maka, you can do it. Maka, Maka, go for it. Maka, hey, yes, Maka, give me half a minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you can do it. Amen. Amen. Not only that, June 20 says, Jude is only one chapter. So we say Jude 1 verse 20, but we say Jude 20. So don't go and open from 19 to 20, so you cannot see it. But you, beloved, build up yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Spirit. Somebody was saying, uh -huh. pray in the Spirit means, I'm going to the next slide to answer your question for you. Good. What does it mean to pray in the Spirit? See, the question has come. Uh -huh. Pray in the Spirit means that the Spirit empowers the prayer and carries it to the Father in the name of Jesus. Mm. The prayer has a living quality mm. characterized by warmth and freedom and strength of exchange. Mm. When you are praying that Spirit, you don't pray for material things. That's right. You, you desire that somebody else be healed, right. be freed, right. be powered, right. be moved on. You forget even about your own needs. Mm. That's all the only problem. Then you, you feel that, hey, when I was going to pray, it was 8 o'clock, now it's, it's, it's 12. You don't even feel the time is over. Then you are deep in the spirit Sorry. praying. That's how it is. But when you can't say, let's pray. Oh, Father. Mm. <laughs> we are praying for forgiveness. If that one is two seconds. Lord, you know I've sinned. Everything I've done, forgive me. Everything I've done. Mm. Three seconds, you finish praying. Yes, <laughs> yes. But it's a hard time you understand these things, and then when you go to your chambers or your knees, begin to pray. Ha. There's a, a, a series I'm reading about. Um, um, next time, when I'm, I'm teaching about prayer, I'll bring it. Position in prayer. Last time, when we were in Ruby, the president said something. I say, remember, he said that he sit on the floor and he, yes, position matters. Lately, I've adopted the style of Daniel. The Bible says, with the new two form, I put my head on the floor, I begin to crack and pray. Then you want, the time I read that my lamb has one, don't even hear. That's praying in the spirit. That time, your desire doesn't matter. What you need doesn't count. Oh, my school fees, my books. No, 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 no. You'll be interceding for other people in the spirit and also in tongues. Amen. Amen. Why do I need the Holy Spirit? Number four. The Holy Spirit gives life and strength to our bodies. I work last Friday from 9.30 to 6. Rush home. Drive very fast. Pick my family. Rush here. Be here 7.30. I was tired. But I feel nothing. After the service had ended, I, uh, you didn't come last Friday yet. Eric was here, right? It was fireworks. We finished, they didn't people want they don't want to go home. Normally, quarter to nine, they start looking at the clock. When I was told here, Holy Spirit said, Don't preach, teach. Just about a tongue. Instead of us closing nine, we near, nearly ten. We were here. Holy Spirit took over the show. It is not me, it's a spirit. Why? He gave me the strength for you to do what you can do. How can I be working eight hours when I come here normally preach for 15, 20 minutes you pray I go home and sleep? My empire is so good I mean, take me. He <laughs> gives you the strength. This morning, your wake up went off. Seven o'clock. <coughs> I'm my strength left and right. <laughs> Thank God I'm here today. The Holy Spirit will continue to give us all the strength we need. Amen. Let me jump fast, fast, because now I'm almost limited. Why do I need the Holy Spirit? Number five. 
The Holy Spirit helped us to resist temptation. Such a reader, man. At this age, ah, 2018, the women will go to Zara. They will buy one cloth to, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> See them walking like, eee. Watch here. Holy Spirit said, no, watch there. You said, let me watch again. <laughs> but he gives you strength against temptation. Mm -hmm. The young girls do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, or not? Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. You see the macho guy there coming like Eric? Eric is not Or Shaki like that. You know, some of the guys, you like tall guys. Like Christian, for example, the guys are warning him. I know that. <laughs> but by then, you're looking at you. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit helps you <laughs> to resist temptation. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Why did the Holy Spirit... Okay, so up to now, the only five points I gave. So you now have five reasons why you need it. You resist temptation to give you strength, to give you power, and all those things. So whenever you are praying, Know the reasons why you should pray for the Holy Spirit. Not only having it, but being filled with it. There's a difference between having the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean? When I had this water poured on me, I had the Spirit upon me. But when I drink the water small, I have the water in me. And I'm not full. I'll top it up, but I'm not full. I'll top it up until the whole container is empty. But still, there's more room. I'll top it until I cannot drink no more water. That means I am full with it. The Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. What it means is this, Ephesians 5. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understanding. Because of time, read it yourself. What it means is that, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, there is no room anymore to contain. Number one, the idea of being one, you are being controlled by God. Rather than other forces, God controls your life. There are people here that Satan controls their lives. If you are there, raise your hand, let me see it's you. <laughs> Put your phone off, please. Okay. There are people that Satan controls them. Example. Raise your hand. Nobody. Oh, you? Satan controls you? Okay, sorry. We'll pray for you later on. <laughs> Who does God control here? Okay. So if Holy Spirit is in you and you are filled, God controls your life. <laughs> Number two. When you are filled by the Spirit, we see the resultant attitude of joy and thanksgiving. That's why people, you see them, their face is always like this. They are always worried and traumatized by things they themselves they don't know. Oh. And then they, they enter the bathroom, take a blade, and begin to cut their wrist, committing suicide. If Holy Spirit is in you, you might not have 10 euro in your pocket, but you still have the joy of the Lord. That's right. Your friends and your peers are nicely dressed and then. But you know, you still have your flash shoe, but you feel good. That's right. That's the Holy Spirit you're talking about. Are you there? God bless you for coming. We also see a relational poster of humility towards God and submission to one another. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you submit yourself to yourselves. Oh, let me cut it. How about you? Please, can you help me on Sunday? Can you be here on time? I'm submitting to her. Not because I'm an elder, hey, Makati, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. No, we don't talk like that. <laughs> Understand? We submit and respect one another. Not only in the church, but also out there. Before your parents, before your brothers and sisters, begin to love each other. So when you speak, as you look at me, to uh, Emanuela, with your face like that, hey, come on. <laughs> she will ask you, Sister, where is your Holy Spirit? And see how you feel. That's right. Sister, you have not been speaking for me to me for three days now. Have I done anything against you? No. Then check your Holy Spirit. <laughs> you see, from that time, things will be going here in your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you homework, the two of you. You're going to write time. 
Her face was like that. I asked her this, then you write. Amen. Then you see the result of your book, you write. Amen. That's how it is. Amen. Amen. This means, <laughs> how can a person be filled with the Holy Spirit? That's the question you might ask. And that you say so, so, but how can I be filled with it? Number one, be clear there is an important difference between indwelling of the Holy Spirit and feeling of the Holy Spirit. I just said it. All believers in Jesus Christ have God's Spirit living in them or dwelling in them. The moment you lift up your hands up, I take Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, come into my heart, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. He gives you the Spirit. But He gives you small. Like water. Small. Ah. You need to top it up. Mm -hmm. Those who are who have the spirit, they come to church all right. Nine o'clock, they are here. They close matches all right, but when they go to them, they get other things they do. I think this is not the person who just come from church. You have small. But there are others who top it up every time. Friday evening, they are here. When they go home, they read. When they are praying, they, they, they sleep in their prayer. Everyone, they top it up. Those ones we call the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me go to the next slide. It means the fruit of the Holy Spirit sums up the nine attributes of the person of the, of the community living in accord with the Holy Spirit. That means if you are through the Holy Spirit, you bear the nine fruit of the Spirit. Number one, name the nine fruit of the Spirit and come to heaven. Love, love, love. peace, joy, peace. joy. joy. Uh -huh. long suffering. Uh -huh. Forbearance, uh, kindness, forgiveness, faithful. joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes, I'm people. If you're mighty, yes, you can't be no brutal. Yes, they can't control themselves. There are some men. They see nine girls, they flip the mobile to their mobile phone, go to the dirty sites. What it is? Control yourself. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Some young age, masturbation is not good. Next time you go to that, that rank, I'm going to teach you the demonic powers behind those things. Yeah, people are doing it. Eh? Yes. <laughs> but we don't teach them, they will do. <laughs> yes, there are some age when you are there. Certain things are prone to happen. Me, I've done it before. I won't hide. I would have done it before. But when I learned the demons behind it, hey, you can't tell me. <laughs> I've seen this age before. Last time I told you, my son is 25. Chris, I'm here. So most of you here, you are my kids. So what I will tell my son, that's what I'm telling you today. There are demons behind those things. But the Holy Spirit is here to give you the power to resist them. It's a temptation. You see this girl, wow. You can even watch until you bang your head against a wall. It happens. It happens to me before. So if it's happening to you now, not <laughs> today. I nearly had a oh, yeah. One day, Edna was driving. I was driving. Uh, I thought she was even waving me. No, no, oh, no, that was all. That was Before I had no ring, but that's half an hour. That's half an that time he had no ring, and he has ring. Uh, so now that he has ring, what is that going to do like that? No matter who is walking by the side, or walking by the side, Ella is going to hold the steel. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, let me. Until the person goes, whew. So, if you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you this is the evidence. You have joy. Nothing oppresses you. Peace was no joke. Parents at home will never trouble you. Hello, ma'am. Please, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. This is supposed to be your vocabulary at home. Chris, can you go to Adi? <laughs> Shaki, 
Are these open? So are these kids loaded? Are these kids loaded? It says you. Are you brought at seven? By the time I read it, they will close. <laughs> so there will be no peace in the house. And among ourselves, when you see me, and I guess if you want, I know that we are not sure. You see, you see, you see, you see, you No! Again, forbearance. My problem is going to be your problem. If I'm going through one thing or the other's art, you feel for me. You pray with me. You don't laugh at me. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talk. No, I don't have to. Again, kindness, you are kind. If her hostess has one thing and I still does not have, oh, I have only one. Let's say you share. Kindness. What again? Goodness. The difference between goodness and kindness, eh? The difference is this. You are good to everybody except yourself. Is that possible? Yeah, of course. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Is that good? No. Okay. Be good to yourself and to others. And do unto others as you wish others to do unto you. You hear about one person's problem. Hey, what's up? Cha -cha -cha -cha. You say. <laughs> Continue sharing. Yours will come. <laughs> Again, faithfulness. You work last month. Oh. You get 60 euros. Oh, uh, the Bible says, if you are faithful, bring 6 euros from the 60. You say, no, 9. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last week, Eric, you got your tag last Friday. Other please remember, let me give it to you. I put it somewhere so that I won't forget. He brought his tag. You are faithful. Somebody gave you a gift, 10 euro. <gasps> Take one euro to return. Bring it. Elder, yeah, bring it. God is saying, wow, you've been faithful to this 10 euro that somebody does you with it? Okay. Now that I know that you give me one euro out of every ten euro, and Andrews, go and give, what's your name again? Abigail. Joyce? Abigail. Abigail. Go and give Abigail hundred euro. God will cost me to come and give you hundred euro. And then you are faithful. God, thank you. And Andrews gave me hundred euro. This is my tie, ten euro. Bam. Goes, wow. And then I'm saying, please go and give Abigail thousand euro. Then you go, you see that? But God knows <laughs> that every one thing that she gets, he come and bring a tight of it. <laughs> so, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, these are your evidence. So check the list and see if you have it. If you don't have it, say, God help me. God help, God help. Inside your tight, you say you are. Okay. And the last one is self-control. Control yourself. Control yourself sometimes. Oh. No, so every time. Sometimes somebody says something against you, you want to blast the person. <laughs> it happens, dog. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> then you say, <laughs> Holy Spirit, open my eyes. You wanted to blast back. Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. Self control. Galatians chapter 5. Somebody can do connect something. Now I'm like a person who just went to the world. Now I'm not going to I remember one day we were driving, driving lessons. We'll be crossing the corner and say, hey, you could be receiving. Can you judge this? Self-control. Amen. Let's come for one another. I mean, teaching good. Teaching good. So, you check the list and see if you are failed or not. If not, then you have work to do. Okay. Because of time, I have to... We have read the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I think that I will stop here because it's almost 14. Next time, if it's for my turn to teach, I'll continue from here. They're going to learn about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how essential it is for you as a believer to be baptized in the Spirit. A picture I'm giving you is this. 
If right now I hold water again, I drink the water. Can you see the water again? No. no. But when I jump into a pool, swim bath with my suit on, will I tell you I am wet? No. no. Why? You see it. That's what we call the baptism. When you are baptized, nobody will tell you this guy is a Christian. You won't say it. The way you dress, the way you talk, the way you they, ah, they will say. They will say. No, you That's don't. why they call those guys in Antioch. These are Christ-like people, Christians. They look at the way you dress. I told you every day, and I continue to say it. They will address you by the way you dress. That's it. So it also reflects. So next time you're going to learn how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I said to everyone who said, I want to reach that level. And when you begin to pray, it just flow, it just flow like that. You see? Like the same boat. You just begin, begin to fire. West come out of your mouth and you don't go through the west. And that's how it is. So it's my desire that every one of you, you should yearn for it. He just says something that, even if you, even people will not go things to give to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven will not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? Yes. Be on your feet and let's turn and pray. James, come James. Open the camera for me. We are praying just one.